Welcome to another unit on business mathematics. This time I'm going to talk about how we can integrate functions. So basically doing the reverse from derivatives. Let's start with the basic idea what integrating is all about. While derivatives basically calculate the slope of a function, our question here is we want to calculate the area below a given function. So if we have something like this, we have our function here. In this case, we want to know what is actually the area below this function. So what we can do in this context is just by drawing rectangles below this function. So we try to get as good as possible an estimate of the area. If we start with rectangles of this wide, however, we see there are some wide areas left. So we cannot cover all of this area. So what can we do? Well, we make the wide a bit smaller. That's what those two things actually are for, or three things are actually doing. So they actually reduce the leftover wide area a little bit. Not fully, but a little bit more. And then we do the same thing again. Again, shorten this a little bit more. And we always can cover a little bit more of this wide area. So again, we're doing something similar to when we calculated derivatives. With derivatives, we moved one point closer and closer and closer to another one. While what we are doing here is we actually move the width of these columns, the width of these rectangles, closer and closer together and closer and closer to zero. So we make them smaller and smaller and smaller regarding their width. But in this case, this means if they are infinitesimally small, they will actually cover the whole area. So again, we could work with a limit, but instead, it's actually much easier to do something like this, like once for specific types of functions and then deduce methods how we can actually combine different types of functions and calculate integrals, or in other words, the primitives of certain functions or even of com more complex functions. So that's basically what I said before. Problem? Well, as I stated, we have an infinite series of rectangles. So we try to make it a bit easier by using the so-called primitive, which is just large f of x of a specific function. We can easily determine these primitives by simply reversing what we know from derivation. So we can imagine these primitives as, well, a function which derivative gives the original function f. That's more or less the mathematical interpretation. The geometrical interpretation states that the primitive s, uh, f of x calculates the area under the function small f of x from 0 to x. So we always get the area starting at 0 until this x. Well, as I said, it's similar to what we know from derivatives, but it's also similar to what we know from working with sums. Because what we actually are doing here is we're having a sum of the areas covered by these increasingly smaller rectangles. And that's why we also say that primitives or integrals in a more general version, are more or less the continuous version 
of sums, where sums is basically a discrete series of values. The primitive or the integral is the continuous version of this. And that's what I already stated, that mathematically speaking, what we basically did here is find a function whose derivative gives the original function f. So we're basically working, if we really put this into our minds, we're basically working the other way around. We're no longer deriving, we're more or less deriving in the other direction. That's what we call integrating. And here we also have a set of simple functions and that those are actually working well we can easily observe by taking the first derivative of these primitives. So if we take this function here, we take the first derivative, we actually get n plus 1 down here and then we subtract 1 from the exponent giving us an exponent of n, n plus 1 times 1 divided by n plus 1 actually gives 1. This leads to x to the power of n. However, there's one big problem because we do not know when we start with this function whether this primitive actually has a constant at this point or not. And if there is a constant, what is actually the value of this constant? So whenever we work with primitives, we have to add like an artificial constant here because if we take the first derivative of this primitive, this would go to zero. So we actually do not know, is there something like this? What value does it take? This is something we need certain starting conditions for. Or if we actually calculate definitive integrals, then it also doesn't matter because then they automatically lift each other, erase each other. But well, this is just one peculiarities which makes integrating different from der uh, deriving. Well, if we take another look, it's more or less what we would have expected. We start with zero, we still get a constant here. The exponential function again remains the same with one difference. We add the constant c here. If we have a function 1 divided by x, that's actually another special case here. This works for all n except for minus 1. Because for minus 1 we have 1 divided by x and the primitive of this is ln of x. Because we know when we take the first derivative of ln of x, we get 1 divided by x. There's actually an important aspect. I said ln of x. If I'm really working here with all allowed numbers, the primitive is ln of the absolute of x. Because here I can insert any number. In the ln, I'm only allowed to insert positive numbers. Well, then I can do something similar for cosinus and sinus. That's those two here. The only thing which is a bit more complicated is actually the logarithm because the primitive of the logarithm looks a little bit more complex and we could actually determine this with another special rule particularly to the case of integrating functions and that's the so-called partial integration. If we have something like this we can actually get this result, this primitive for the ln. So this is not as straightforward as one would have expected. And to close this session off, one final remark, whereas with derivatives, by simply applying the rules, we always get a result. There are some functions where it's either very hard or even impossible to find the primitive and actually write it down analytically. So that's a big, big problem here. Not necessarily do we always find a primitive.
for a specific function. Well, so far so good. That's everything I wanted to cover in this session. So I say goodbye and see you next time.